Hi, everybody. Welcome to First Center for Spiritual Living uh, in New York City. Uh, welcome to our self-healing class. For any of you who are new, and I know there's always new people on every week, uh, First Church, First Center here in New York is the very place that Louise Hay uh, learned uh, what we call uh, the science of mind. She learned, uh, she got her new thought uh, education. She became a practitioner here. And she learned how to do affirmative prayer. Back in those days, it was referred to as uh, treatment, spiritual mind treatment. And I thought tonight, because a lot of people are new and maybe they ne they've never heard it before, uh, there's a book. It's called The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And it's a textbook. It's not necessarily a book that you, you read and read like a novel, but it's, uh, it's a reference book. For those of you who are, you know, you're really starting to get into uh, new thought. It's, uh, it's a book, when I first encountered it, they told me to go to the glossary. <laughs> because sometimes we use language that's, um, you know, you haven't heard before and you want to, uh, you want to understand, you know, uh, what what we're talking about, and uh, so I would recommend people if if you really like Louise Hay and you like these classes um, to order a book. Uh, the copy I always recommend uh, has a foreword by Gene Houston, Ph.D. And the reason I recommend that one is if you get that book uh, and you really want to study, there's a concordance, which means you can look up subjects, ideas, and it'll bring you right to the pages. Uh, so again, it's a textbook. Uh, you might be interested in it. I've known ministers over the years who say they've read it through about two or three times in their life. And uh, so it's, again, it's not like picking up Louise, Louise Hayes' book, which you can read through in a few hours. It's, uh, it's an endeavor. Uh, I wanted to talk about affirmative prayer for a moment. Uh, and I went to the glossary of the textbook, uh, and it's called Treatment in the t there, right? Uh, and, and that's what, uh, years ago, that's what we would refer to when we're thinking of affirmative prayer today. Dr. Holmes wrote, treatment is the art, the act, and the science of consciously inducing thought within the universal subjectivity for the purpose of demonstrating that we are surrounded by a creative medium which responds to us through a law of correspondence. Okay, so note the words. It's the art, it's the act, it's the science. And we'll, we'll say here of practicing this teaching, like practice seeing the good, you know. We're, we're, we're here to learn how to see the good. Um, people who were developing a metaphysical approach to life their commitment is to see the good and to, you know, stay on the beam, living in the awareness that we are one with life, we're one with spirit, and we're continually here, you know, as we're growing spiritually to see the good in all situations. And you hear me say often from Louise, hey, you get to a point where you don't want to be judging people, places, or things. You want to be seeing the good, and, and remember the phrase from Louise Hay is uh, regarding people and their behavior is the idea that people, whoever they are, are doing the best they can with the information, the understanding, and the awareness that they have. So when Dr. Holmes in the textbook is saying affirmative prayer treatment is the art, the act, and the science of consciously inducing thoughts you know, into, into bringing them into your, your subjective mind, into your, into your thinking, for the purpose of demonstrating that we are surrounded by a creative medium. So the thing is, if I keep thinking positive thoughts about myself, if I'm learning to love myself, uh, I love, accept, and approve of myself as an affirmation you would hear from Louise Hay material. If I keep thinking that, and I keep thinking, uh, you know, love my brother as myself, I mean, if I keep extending the idea of love uh, toward every human being. Namaste, right, is a, is a salutation. And, you know, the divinity in me recognizes the divin divinity in you. So we learn to live this life, what we call the affirmative life, by consciously, he said it, the science of consciously inducing thought, you know, into your subconscious. 
Um, so we do that with affirmations. <laughs> when it probably when this book first came out in 87, I think it was, uh, I learned to start saying these affirmations. I love, accept, and approve of myself. Or I, I love, accept, and approve of myself exactly as I am. Um, and other affirmations like never, never, never criticize myself. Um, as you learn to take control of your thinking, uh, things start to think, things start to show up differently. You start to demonstrate. Uh, you start to see in your own life a reflection of what lives inside of you. So then Dr. Holmes goes on in the very same textbook under the word treatment or affirmative prayer. Uh, he says a more simple meaning, and it's more simple meaning, this affirmative prayer treatment is the time, the process, and the method you use, right? That you use, it's necessary to change our thought. So this is tough for people because we start thinking positive thoughts. And underneath that new positive thinking, we're trying to uh, be, we're trying to own and we're trying to feel, you know, because if you think new thoughts and you really believe them, you have passion behind them, you know, they're going to take root and they're going to show up in your life. So he's saying, in its more simple meaning, treatment is the time, the process, and the method necessary to the changing of our thought. Treatment is clearing the thoughts of negation. So you hear me in every lesson that we do of Louise's every week talk about we're in the business of trading in the lesser ideas that we have for the greater. Dr. Holmes is saying that treatment is clearing the thoughts that we have within ourselves of negation or negativity. And it's a lot of work for a lot of us because we were raised in families where a lot of things uh, were passed on to us. And uh, you know, many of the things we embraced um, weren't necessarily the, the best things. But you know, we're little children. We, Louise Hay said, you were born into this world. Uh, you're like a bundle of light and joy, and you know you learned a lot of information, um, you know, as a child. So, in its in its more simple meaning, again, treatment is the t the time, the process, and the method. So, I could do a spiritual mind treatment maybe in thirty seconds or a minute, or I could do one even faster. Uh, but sometimes it's not that easy because. For a treatment to be a treatment, you really have to have a place uh, where you, you sense that you, your words have caused something to happen. So, for example, in, in treatment, there's, um, and I'm saying affirmative prayer is treatment, right? There's five steps that we teach. You can also teach it another way, but first is recognition. So you contemplate and you quiet yourself and you center yourself. And you get to the point where you recognize that there's power, there's love, there's energy, energy. And you just have a sense of that. And you contemplate you know, the idea of oneness. And there is a power. And then the step two is, is realizing that that power is within you. So you, you go from recognizing to unifying with that power. And then three, you're going to make a declaration and that you're going to state something that's true, and it's always been true, though you don't realize it. You're going to state that I'm whole, that I'm a divine um, child of a loving universe. You're going to state that I'm whole, and there's a divine pattern of health within me and operating through me. So whatever you're going to be declaring in that step of that prayer process, you're bringing right in. First of all, you've centered yourself in realizing that there is one power, not two, there's one power in the universe and that power is operating within me, you would say. And, and so you sense to know it. And then you're gonna make the declar declaration of a truth. I'm a being of light, I am, uh, I'm whole, I'm healthy. Um, and anything like that, you would state in the third step. And the fourth is simply giving thanks for the truth that you know, which you've just stated. And the fifth is releasing this perfect idea uh, into the universe and, and knowing that it's going to bear fruit. So 
I'm not going to spend the entire night talking about affirmative prayer, but I want you all to know, you know, what Louise learned and where she got this information was from this textbook and this particular part of the glossary. It really lays it out. A treatment can be quick. If see, if I'm not believing what I'm saying, I really can't complete that affirmative prayer. An affirmation's different. I used to have them on sticky notes. <laughs> on my mirrors and uh, everywhere. Uh, and, and they're good to keep saying them and you build it up in your consciousness. But if you want to develop your prayer process so it's more powerful, then I would I'd be happy to present more and teach more on this subject and move through and present these steps and that I'm just briefly overviewing right now. Uh, one of our uh, one of Dr. Holmes' his teachers, uh, I think it was, um, I can't remember right now, he said, you need to have feeling in your treatment. <laughs> so it's, it's more than an intellectual exercise. There's that recognition, there is spirit, that spirit is within me. And then you're going to make the statement that I'm whole and complete, I'm healthy and I'm well. And um, whatever it is you're treating for you, you want to bring yourself to a point where there's some passion and some belief. And so then you're going to release this perfect uh, treatment into, uh, into, the mind of, into the mind of God. And, and then, you're, you know, then you're going to maintain positive expectancy and not keep on doubting yourself. And whenever you go to doubt or worry, then you just start the treatment over again. So it's not complicated, but it is a practice. You'll hear me talking week by week about practicing the presence, practicing knowing there is good. And, uh, and so that's what we do. And as you, as you begin to do this, you're going to start to see results. Uh, every lesson, or many lessons I've shared with you, uh, from my teachers in the past, they would say, you have this infinite power available to you. Dr. Holmes himself said, uh, there's power for good in the universe, greater than you of which you are a part. That's very important. There is power, there's energy in the universe. Call it a higher power, call it God, call it, you can call it anything. But we, there is this power, it's in the universe, it's in everything you could think of. There's no place where it doesn't exist. And most, most importantly for yourself is the realization that whatever you've been looking for, is already, you already have it. It's already within you. So our lessons are here for you to wake up to the fact that it, you have it already. You know, we call this a journey that you take here without a distance. And what that means is everything you're looking for um, is already within you. And so that's a journey without a distance. And most people don't realize that because many people are looking for good outside of themselves. They're looking for love and affection and they're looking for everything. <laughs> they're looking outside. So you'll hear us say that this is an inside job and uh, it's, it's also been called the best kept secret of the age, you know, which is God in you or spirit within you. Uh, and you can learn how to, you can learn how to use this power. Uh, so Dr. Holmes, who was again the teacher of, uh, was the author of the book, who influenced Louise, would say people carry around a lot of dead, dead wood, ancient corpses, and that's the stuff that you know where I doubt myself, or I'm critical of myself, or critical of other people, um, where I'm playing the blame game, or any of that type of, uh, any of that type of thing. Uh, that's the stuff we want to drop. Sometimes I reference the Four Agreements because that's another great book, um, and, and it explains how we, you know, as children we build up all these beliefs, and you know, as we get older, we we realize that a lot of them we would be better for us to let go of, and so we're always in the business here of expanding, and it, it's natural for us to expand because the whole universe is expanding. Uh, I was taught and I believe that, you know, everyone on the planet is evolving. And we get our lessons at the perfect time and the perfect way and the perfect place. And I was always reminded that you have what it takes within you 
when change takes place. You know, so you have power available to use, and this is really the whole point um, with affirmative prayer. So we want to align ourselves and, and keep on realizing um, that we are one with this life. Uh, it, it's operating within us, and it responds to us. And if you want to have your prayer process be far more powerful, then, you know, uh, get passionate about it. Allow yourself to have some feeling in the process, and then belief. Uh, there is another old saying is uh, people say, well, when do I do affirmative prayer? And we used to have a, a kind of like a little joke in the classes, early, late, and often, which was those of us who are involved in this teaching, we're really attempting to see the good in every moment. And we understand that every encounter truly is a holy encounter because every person you meet, if you're seeing it the way we're talking about, is a divine being. And you know, that's that idea, namaste, namaste. You could walk down the streets and just recognize the divinity in everybody. Um, too often, too quickly, people go towards criticism and blame. And you can live your life that way. Um, and, and you can live your life in chaos. And that's not living your life from a spiritual point of view. And it's, um, so what we're attempting to do is have a practice where we, 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 we want, we want to develop positive expectancy. And this teaching affords us that. You know, we keep on seeing the good and seeing the good. And uh, if you're committed to that process, then you will start to, <laughs> the good you're seeking will be there. Also part of this process is the realization that you're one with spirit. And because you're one with spirit and everything you're looking for is within you, there's guidance that is offered to you all the time. And if you go back to the time of Emerson, he wrote many things, you know. Um, the idea behind it is everything that you're looking for, again, is already within you. Um, as you learn to meditate and do affirmative prayer, things will come to you that will guide your way, and it'll come to you at the right time in the right place. So. Um, that's my little introduction to treatment. Jimmy handed me um, a little handout on it in case I, I missed anything regarding the five steps. He said, uh, the first is recognition, the recognition that this force is, and it's in you, right? So you recognize and acknowledge that this divine force, divine mind, and, and the law is, is flowing in and around and through all things. It's omnipresent, I meaning it's in everything, everywhere, every planet in the solar system. There's no place where it isn't. And it's the source of everything. And the step two is uni unification. It's simply acknowledging that everything is interconnected and interdependent. There is no separation in the mind of God. You know, separation is an illusion. We are one, and everything exists in this unitary field, this oneness. The third step, which uh, I said, but we'll say it now in a different way, is you think of your desired thing in your prayer. You know, maybe it's for your supply or your health or whatever it is. You think about it and you think about, you place it into the divine law. And this handout says, realizing that the divine force is flowing through everything, including each of us all the time. Therefore, I accept that I'm one with whatever good I'm asking for, and in that knowledge, it will manifest in my life. And so that's the third step. And the fourth step is giving thanks, um, or in gratitude. Um, it's, and then this is very important to feel this again, okay? Because so you bring yourself to the point, well, okay, I know I'm one with spirit, and, uh, and I know I'm whole and I'm complete. And whatever this problem is, it's now resolved. And or if there's a health challenge, I know that there's a perfect pattern of health within me. And you get to the fourth step, and I give thanks. You're not giving thanks to a God above, necessarily. You're giving thanks for the awareness that you have. And this is considered one of the most important steps. This attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving is really important. It's, it's essential, actually. So you want to feel this thanksgiving deeply and feel the beauty of the fact uh, of what you're asking for will take place, will manifest. 
Uh, you know this to be true and you express this knowledge through gratitude, gratitude, joy, and peace. Step five, once again, is release. You're releasing this affirmative prayer into the universe. Um, you now release the words into the, the divine law, uh, what physicists call the unitary field, knowing that all the good you have asked for will be. Uh, you have now planted the seeds and they will manifest according to the universal law of cause and effect. As you sow, so shall you reap. The divine law reflects back what we release into it. So, and then you d declare, and so it is, <laughs> or so be it. And this is the truth. Um, the author of this um, book that Jimmy handed me, a uh, quotation from it, said, affirmative prayer is a direct, focused, and organized process using these five steps to manifest your, your desired outcome. Affirmative prayer is an essential component of the creative mindset, the first step in the creative process in motion. So that's my little intro on spiritual mind treatment. Um, let me see what I have for you next. Um, I'm gonna set aside the textbook, but everyone, if you're serious about this teaching, you're wanting to get deeper, more deeply involved, I'd recommend picking up a copy of it, um, The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And now we come to um, Louise Hay's material. Um, a little bit about Louise and me. Uh, <laughs> many of you know I encountered Louise Hay's book um, the year after it came out. And I was attending a, one of the first classes that was being taught of her material. And some months later, I, be, I became the facilitator of that class. And the person who was teaching it was a, a female attorney. And uh, she said to me, I'd like you to facilitate this, Greg, because I have to move and, uh, to another part of the state. And I thought, I, you know, I'm a business person <laughs> at the time. And, uh, I said, I really, I'm just enjoying this material. And uh, she said, yeah, but you're enjoying it a lot. And she said, uh, I don't have anybody else. So that's how it started. And that's, I think it was around 1988 or 9 that I first started these um, classes or groups. And I've been teaching them every week ever since in every type of school, um, church, spiritual center. And really, it's always a conversation about it's a conversation about the conversation you, you are having with yourself. And you hear me talk about that every Thursday night, because I'll ask you, what's it been like being you this week? Because what I'm hoping people start to do is they start to become a little bit more mindful of their thought processes and what they're thinking about all day long and how they're interacting. Because your life is... <laughs> We do all our work in consciousness, is essentially what I'm saying. So, so if, you're, if you don't like what's going on in your life, you know, the place to start is not on the outer. It's always going to be on the inner. Um, if you're a worrier, for example, and you're worried all the time, you know, that's kind of like, um, it's going to create a life that's going to be very unpleasant for yourself. Um, I've joked about it in classes before. We talked about Chicken Little. Chicken Little was always saying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You, you might want to pay attention if you're always worrying, because if you are, you know, th there's things you can do about it. You know, we teach you, again, affirmations and denials. Um, Louise says that one of the first points of her philosophy is we're each 100% responsible for all of our experiences. And so, you know, our thinking, you know, thoughts are things. Our thinking is creating our experiences. Every, th every thought we think is creating our future, uh, she said. Um, so what we learn how to do, again, you may not learn how to do a form of prayer tonight, but you can learn very simply to start um, using affirmations that are positive and keep using them. And use them often. <laughs> Um, and when you notice yourself being critical of yourself or other people, stop. You know, we joke, we say stop in the name of love. Because what we're trying to do here is reverse that 
negative uh, train of causation, meaning if you tend to be negative and critical, critical, negative, that's, that shows up in your life. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can reverse that if you are willing to do a little bit of work on the languaging. Um, you've heard me say many times before, those of you who know me well, there was a time where I think I used the word should probably like every two minutes. And I encountered a part of it, her book, You Can Heal Your Life, where she said, I think should is the most damaging word of all. She wished they could throw it in the garbage, the garbage can. Uh, because most often you'll notice that when the word is, should is being used, it's kind of like a diminishing kind of word. I, if I'm saying you should do this, you should do that, you should, I'm really giving a lot of directions. And I'm also saying uh, to whoever I'm speaking with, this is wrong, 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 wrong. We're not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. And that's a pattern that we, we picked up somewhere along the way. And it's not expansive. She would say in the textbook, you might notice if, how a little child reacts to that, you know, if, <laughs> they shrink. And, and, and the same thing, I don't think anyone's intentionally trying to hurt anybody, but it's a pattern of thought. And there's a specific suggestion in her book about that, you know, how about, you know, start using the word could more often. You know, and I, and I smile with that because I remember in sales training, that it, that it was a closing technique. You would say, Mrs. Smith, would you like this or would you like this? Or maybe you have a, another idea. In other words, people receive information better um, when they're not being told what to do and you're not, when you're not making them wrong. And so that's, a, that's you know, it's taken a long time. <laughs> uh, for me to turn that pattern around, but it's, it's, it's really good because the thing is, if you know that you're critical and you're being critical, you're pointing a lot of fingers outward, outwardly, whatever those judgments or that way of living is, you know, you are really being very tough on yourself too, and you may not even be conscious that you are, but that's a pattern, right? It's a pattern that's been passed on to you somewhere um, that you have possibly, <laughs> augmented or, you know, increased or whatever, but it's a pattern that can be turned around. Uh, uh, so that's something to just think about. You can make a game of it. That's what I used to do, I'm sure. I would just notice how often I'd be using the word should. And I start to smile and I'm kind of like, oh, there I go again, you know. And so that's, I think that's a good exercise for this week for people to think about. And, and I, once you're cued into it, you'll notice how often other people are doing it too. Um, you know, we want to get to a place ultimately, here's an expression from 12-step programs, where we live and let live. I don't want to be the last word on people's behavior. I don't really want to have an opinion on people's behavior. Because I do understand, as Louise taught, that people are really doing the best that they can with the information, the understanding, and the awareness they have. So, and I have another practitioner friend I'm fond of who always said, you know, she's taking care of herself and she's minding her business. And all of us are on a spiritual pathway and, and really that we're all attempting to expand and grow. And I'd like to think we don't have the time for that stuff because those are kind of like roadblocks, you know, and, and we go back to it again and again. And even the people will change in our lives, but those patterns they still stay with us. They're defeating patterns, you know, many of them, right? And they stay with us until we stop it. And when we stop it, you know, your whole world starts to change. One of the great things about staying involved in a class like this is we're always touching on something. In the audience, people pick up different things. And, you know, if you tune in weekly or you sign on on Facebook or because we, you, we can be watching YouTube and Facebook, it's it's like there's these reminders, you know. And, um, I used to be, um, well, for many years, I went to a 12-step program. And the thing, I didn't always like going, but I always knew that it was important to go. And this class is very similar. <laughs> because if I'm in a room of like-minded people, and I'll hear something always, you may not get anything from me tonight, for example, but you might hear something from, uh, 
Grace or Gina or Clark or Deborah, you know, it, it's just the way it works, you know. You put yourself into this healing conversation because we do that for you on Thursdays and we do it on Sundays uh, morning and also we have another group that we do on Wednesdays. It's opportunities for you to check in and listen and uh, assess how you're doing yourself with that important conversation. Again, the healing, con what's the most important conversation? What's going on? It's the conversation you're having with yourself. And if you notice that you're being angry and resentful often, and you're upset often, uh, and you're reactive, you know, so it's not about the other guy. See, that's a lesson that, another lesson that I needed to learn somewhere along the way. It's really never about the other person. It's about you and the way you're reacting. Uh, because again, people are doing the best they can. You know, I mean, you might say, well, they're doing terrible things, and that could be true. But the thing is, you are, you're always at choice in terms of what you allow in and who you allow in and, and, and what you obsess over, what you think about. You know, you can simply change the channel. And by that, I don't mean, you know, like on television, you can change the channel yourself. You know, I, I was taught by a really great minister and you've heard me say this before. He said, you have the ability now to commune with some of the greatest minds that have ever lived. I mean, uh, you don't just have to watch junk. You don't have to wa watch news. It's always bad. You know, you, you know, we're here for a brief time, like a blip of time, you know, in terms of years. And what do you want to put your attention on? You know, because if you think about hitching your wagon to the stars or thinking of, of yourself in expansive ways, as Emerson was suggesting, you know, you, you'll walk right into those life experiences if you put your time, your attention, your heart on positive thoughts, positive things, and you learn to shift that conversation around you. Because the conversation you're having always is with you. <laughs> so you want to be mindful. You know, to, last night someone was saying in another group to be kind, not to judge, you need to realize people are doing the best they can, and you want to give them a break in the same way you want to give yourself a break. Um, Louise Hay really is always asking us to learn how to be our own best friend and love ourselves. She would say, I love, accept, and approve of myself exactly as I am. And she did a lot of work with mirrors. In other words, you know, this is what we want to build up is our sense of self. Because then you're going to find that you won't be needing to point fingers at other people. Um, the last thing I'll mention on this, I th probably have told this before, but I do remember a time in my life where I was engaged in a lot of group work, and I was one of the participants, and I was able to see what was wrong with everybody, probably within a few weeks. And, because I was smart, and I could see it, and I could, but here's the expression. If you spot it, you've got it. And <laughs> so I used to let people, you know, people, places, and things get under my skin and bother me. And um, over time, that's changed tremendously. Because now I can observe, and I can understand. You know, I really, this person's like, OK, they're dealing with a lot, and they're doing the best they can. And I don't have to take any of that personally. Um, I think it's Don Miguel Ruiz who said, take nothing personally, <laughs> or refuse to be offended. Um, so we do our work in consciousness. There's so much work to do within ourselves that we really don't have to do a heck of a lot elsewhere. Um, because when you're really loving yourself, everything in your life starts to change. Um, your health improves. Your diet improves. The way you're interacting with people improves. Um, so these are things to remember. A um, Couple more things. Um, she, Louise said, everyone suffers from low self-esteem or self-hatred and guilt. And so that, that's the work. We want to start loving ourselves more and praising ourselves more and elevating that conversation with the most important person, which again is yourself. Um, and regarding ancient hurts and resentments and all that stuff, she would say, it's only a thought you're having about something. You're hanging on to something, right? And that thought can be changed. So you can change your resentments and whatever criticism or guilt you have, you can, you can find a way to forgive yourself and forgive others. She said, these things, resentment, criticism, and all of that, are the most damaging patterns, because they affect your health, they affect your, um, your life and everything. 
So releasing these will dissolve everything, you know, physical things, you know. She said in the book, cancer, just, you know, releasing all this stuff. And again, I think I said this, she said, when we really begin to love ourselves, everything in our life begins to work. And she really strongly says we must release the past and forgive everybody. Now, she uses the word must, and I won't use that word because it tells, it's like I'm telling you what to do, but <laughs> we must, she said, be willing to do all this. We, we must be willing to, to begin to learn, our, learn to love ourselves. I'm not saying anybody has to do anything, but I know the wisdom <clears throat> that's in her words. Um, you know, as you start to change the conversation that lives within yourself, within yourself, um, you'll have peace and everything will start to change. Um, so at this point, I just want to close by saying, life is really very simple. I'm quoting Louise. It is always giving you back what you, what you give out. So with that in mind, um, we could start changing some of our conversations around. You, instead of thinking life is rough and people are out to get us or something, we could think everything, everyone is here to be helpful. Life is good. I am supplied and supported. I'm an inlet and outlet of God activity. I have everything I need. Uh, so any of these things are very powerful. Um, and learning how to do affirmative prayer um, is, would be a great step for some, of, some people on the call. Um, until you do that, keep the affirmations up. Um, because as you build up your affirmations, you'll start to see changes, too. Um, when I first started this teaching, the old, our students in our classes would say, well, I've manifested parking spaces and uh, things like that, you know. And uh, so they would be working with small demonstrations. But the universe doesn't know small or big. <laughs> the universe is going to respond to what you truly believe. So um, you have the power. There's power for good in the universe, and you can use it. 